So you get born, you're coming through life, whether it be, you know, you're three years old, you're 30 years old, sooner or later we come across this thing we can call pain. You know what? You're not going to avoid it. Nobody likes it, but sooner or later it's going to get you. And it might be a catastrophic pain like loss of a parent when you're young or trauma. It might just be pain because you don't get your way. But uh, life brings it to you. And as we come up here in life and we hit this thing called pain, we instinctively try to find a way either around it or to avoid it. And for many people, and by the way, um, I'm an alcoholic like my friend Jack. I'm glad you're here, so I'm not the only one. And I'm also a grateful recovering drug addict. But my first, uh, my first drug was my dad's pornography. Now, I never knew that was a drug till I actually got into recovery from drugs. And my counselors started to help me understand that pornography is a drug. And we come over here to avoid our pain. We, I'm going to do a little bit of a, uh, an abbreviation here. AOD is a, kind of a clinical abbreviation for alcohol and other drugs. By the way, alcohol is a drug. Make no mistake about it. When you're, if you're having your evening glass of wine, you're having a drug. And I'm just putting it up here because we, we need space. We can also uh, put over here, we can say the uh, compulsion to control. How's that one? Trying to control others. Or the compulsion uh, to control people, places, or things. Any of those things, which is a whole lot. Um, how about... One of my favorites, I just came back from Mississippi, um, and I came back from Mississippi a little larger than I left. We'll uh, call this food. Um, how about uh, sex and porn? How about relationships? I'm running out of room. What am I missing? Raise your hand and tell me what I might be missing. Uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. Okay? These are, these are our uh, gambling. You know why I never gambled? Because I was spending all my money on drugs. That's why. Work. Shopping. Write them up here. Whatever is pertinent to you, wherever I'm running out of room, you put this in here. Money. Yes. Money, that's right, thank you. By the way, I, in my opinion, uh, in our Christian evangelical culture, uh, workaholism is probably one of the most rewarded addictions we know. And it kills people. Um, but we reward people, especially religious workaholism. That guy is here every time the doors open. We, he does so much for us. And ooh, that feels good, we get pats on the back. So we come over here, and we do one or a number of these things, and it feels really good for a while, and then sooner or later, we, it, the payoff is no longer sufficient. In fact, we start to pay a price for it. And from there, we begin to experience this. This is kind of the secondary experiences of our behavior, of our, I should say of our addictive behavior. How about shame? Shame is that, that dark, odorless cloud that suffocates us. It's that feeling that, you know, there's just something fatally flawed about me. And I'll never escape it. I'll never be right. I'll never have my, you know what, together. What else are some of the consequences that happen? Hopelessness. That's right. Feelings of hopelessness. Isolation, that's right. Make no mistake about it. Addiction is a disorder of isolation. Desperation, that's correct. Fear, yep. By the way, do you notice the mood changing in the room? Yeah. Anger and guilt. Thank you. 
want to put abuse. Yep. Rejection. I'm going to be repeating these because I know the, they're not picking you up, but I want the, uh, the video viewers to hear your responses. Depression, that's correct. Anxiety. Remorse. How about this one? Self hatred. By the way, as, you, as you're participating in this and you feel the mood, the mood in the room change. That's a great thing for you. It means you're alive. And that means that you're human enough where you're still connected with the people around you. That's a great thing. Because not everybody's like that. Sometimes people get so sick that they can't even be emotionally impacted by those around them. What else over here? Restlessness is right. How about what things we lose? How about loss of relationship? We talked briefly about that on uh, isolation. How about divorce? I'm sorry? That's right. Loss of money. Money. Bankruptcy. Ah. Uh, how do you spell that? There we go. That's right. How about, can I say dignity? How about loss of reputation and dignity? Yep. I'm sorry for my handwriting. Loss of self esteem. That's right. Mental presence or mental clarity? That's right. Mental clarity. That's right. Feeling overwhelmed. Being overwhelmed. Ah, oh, my handwriting is so bad. How about loss of health? Anybody ever lose a job? Or am I the only one that's lost a job? Am I the only one here that got a DUI? All right. I'm going to write down because I got a DUI. Or other. Are you talking about me again? Oh, my goodness. Don't think it. Feel it. Loss of trust. Insanity. That's right. Loneliness. Oh my gosh. I know how to spell that word. Okay, I'm going to move on here because I'm 
We might run a little late tonight. I hope not. But uh, So here's what happens. You're coming through your life, whether it's a day or a pattern, but you're hitting pain. It's inescapable. And it's natural not to want to feel it. And so we find things. We find strategies that work, at least for a while. But then they quit working and they start having negative consequences. And um, these are some of the ways that we have um, experienced those. These aren't words, these are experiences. The result is this. Eroded power for living. We're coming through life, pain that threatens us. We do these things so that we can get through the pain, so we can do fine. We experience these things as a result, but the net result is eroded power for living. We're in worse shape than we now than we were before. And we take this eroded power for living and we bring it into our life experience. So, my insanity isn't just here. It's me. It's in my life. My loneliness didn't happen yesterday. It's here with me today. My self-hatred wasn't last week. It's today. So, all of this, we don't... This is now what we carry with us. And we bring it up here And with all of this baggage, we now are faced again with pain. So now, we have even less to address this pain than we did before. So it makes it all the more easier to come over here. In fact, this is the pattern. Now, we may have seen this pattern from somebody else. In fact, most of us did. Everybody does this at some level in some way. And we saw this, but we've actually created it for ourselves. So we may have kind of been shown it as an example. We may have a family history. But you know what? We take the drugs. We run around trying to control the whole world. We gambled. We We slept around. We did the damage. So... Somehow or another, things have to change. And this is where the 12-step programs and the opportunities and really the message of the 12-step programs, it's essential that we listen. So what happens if we do something different? We go here. Higher powers, certainly God. Sadly, most of us, God has been like a theological statement. He's been like this theological thing. If your understanding of God is based on theology alone, then probably you're a practical atheist. Because you know what? Theology never saved anybody's life. That's why God sent Jesus. Flesh and blood, here and now, right in your face, to be personal. God also helps through our 12-step programs. You know, I went, to, I went to church all my life. And it wasn't until my experience with Alcoholics Anonymous I knew what it meant to give my life to Christ. Um, my sponsor, my recovery partners, I have, I have what I call recovery partners. Recovery groups and friends Your counselor, excuse me, your counselor, your therapist could be a higher power of sorts because I guarantee you this, they're not going to tell you to go out and get drunk. At least I don't think they will. But I'll say, I'll just call this professional help. So I come over here and I make a decision. I make the decision to do something different, to do an alternative, something that's probably not quite comfortable for me. I'm not in the habit of doing, but I come over here. So instead of going get drunk, I'll go to my 12-step group. 
And by the way, talking about groups, that Emotionally Healthy Spirituality uh, group, fantastic group. So, um, but here, we experience shame. Over here, we experience grace. You know, if you walk into an AA meeting and you say, you know what, I think I'm an alcoholic, they're going to say, wow, that's great, come sit next to me. Um, I told people at my church when I was in my t- early 20s that I think I was an alcoholic. They didn't say that. Here, I can find some acceptance. I can, inf- and I can find some understanding You can find some appreciation. Wow. That's nice. Tell someone you're an alcoholic and they appreciate you for it. What else? Compassion. Isn't that a beautiful word? Freedom. It's what we were made for. Make no mistake about it. Freedom. Freedom. Connection. Hope. Comfort. Is that what I heard? Mm -hmm. Comfort. And I'm going to put healing. Comfort and healing. Okay, I missed the last one. I'm sorry. Empathy. Beautiful word. Purpose. That's right. Tools. Strategy. Guidance. Help. Peace. Man, I could... You could... Wisdom. And I thought I knew it all. Forgiveness. Who said that? Hmm. How about this? Ability to forgive. Value. Can I also put self respect? Respect. Oh, that's a good one. Uh huh. Redemption. What a beautiful word. Yep. Wait a minute. Let me catch up with you here. Community. Rest. (sighs) Wow, that's a good one. Joy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write that one big. I'm going to circle that one. Honesty. You know... Let me take a moment. Who, who said honesty? Thank you. Um, if you take a moment to look deeply into your own history and your relationships, I think you're going to likely find times where you've attempted to be honest with people. Where you would speak to them about someone else's problem that was really your own. Or you would say, you know, I've got a little, I've got a food addiction. I'm eating too much. When in reality, maybe you've got uh, an eating binge disorder or something. We get to a, 
we, we kind of tell people half-truths because we so want to be honest. And yet having been honest in the past at certain times or having been caught with in our, you know, exposure and our vulnerabilities, we got punished. So we want to be honest, but we're so afraid because when we've been honest in the past, it just cost us too much. This is the great value of going and hanging out with a bunch of alcoholics. They got no more stones to throw. And they can't even, they can't afford to be pointing fingers at you because they got three of them pointing back at themselves. And they've learned that. I remember the, the movie uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the scene with the land of misfit toys. Maybe it's because I'm old, but I love that scene now. As a kid, I watched it. It never made sense to me. Now, I think about these, land, these toys that were broken, the teddy bear that had one eye, or the train that was missing some of the wheels, and this whole community of toys that were broken and misfit and mismade, and they were like banished to this island because there was no need for them. There was no room for them. They weren't up to par, but together they found great community. And they found great joy. And their common ground was that they had come to peace with their misfitness because they saw it in others and they got to a point where, you know what? It just wasn't a big deal anymore. That is empathy. And by the way, that's what Jesus is. God's empathy for us. To show us that he gets it. Tempted in all ways like we were, yet without sin, he continued always to trust his God. Sorry, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a theologian. But the great value of Jesus is because he was human. And they killed him. And he let him do it. Because he wasn't going to hate him, and he wasn't going to strike back. I cannot even imagine that. But I just go with it. What else we got here? Love. Speaking about Jesus. Thank you. Per- perfect timing, sir. Trust. Trust. You know, you get a few years of sobriety and you begin to kind of trust yourself once again. Wow. Yeah. Success. I'm sorry? Sanity. Stability. Wow. (laughs) Clarity. Yep, I've already got that. And you know what? Let me look at the clock here. How are we doing the clock? Okay. Yeah, we're going to run over. Have you noticed how the mood has changed a little bit here? But you didn't forget this, did you? But you felt some of this. That's healthy. Going forward, the tendency is to want to take this and just like get rid of this. No, 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 no. This is yours to use. This is part of your human experience. Don't deny this. You take this with you and you take this here. You see, people look at this and they get real, I think, idealistic and grandiose, go, great, I'm going to go to God. I'll feel nothing but joy for the rest of my life. No. You take this, and you take your broken self-esteem and your loss of dignity, and you bring it over here, and you start talking about it honestly. You see, we don't escape this. We go here, and it becomes transformed. This is what makes this. That's the point. And right, by the way, you've probably already figured this one out. This right here on your sheet is your diagram of your step one. You get that? This right here, my friends, is your diagram of step two. You get that? Right here... 
step three, right here. We made the decision to turn our will and our life over to the care of God as we understand it. And that is always most pertinent when you are facing pain. It's easy to do that when things are nice and sweet and wonderful. But do it when you face pain. That's the time of greatest value on this. Now, before I close, um, I just kind of want this to sink in. And I'll take two minutes for a couple of questions and then we'll wrap up. Because really the most important thing about tonight is not this. It's going to your groups. The most important thing about your recovery program is getting in the groups and getting with people. Not listening to some guy yammering on. There's a place for that and there's a value for that. But take this and then take it to the most important place and that is you and your community. A couple of questions. You had your hand? Well, pride over here. We can have toxic pride. I'll just put TC for toxic pride. And I'll put HP, which people will think is higher power, but we'll call that healthy pride. Healthy pride is knowing, you know what? I did the best I could. You know what? I brought myself to this effort. Toxic pride is the thing that, you know, when I got it all together, what's wrong with you? Toxic pride always compares. Okay? Healthy pride doesn't need to compare. A couple more questions and we'll wrap. Yes, sir. Well, guilt is as a result of something that I've done. Shame is my identity. Shame is, is, uh, is a judgment on my value and my existence. You know, guilt is I made a mistake. Uh, shame is I am a mistake. I am worthless. Uh, that's the kind of the simplistic uh, essence of it. Yeah, it is. I, I, I live in a very simplistic brain. One, one more question and then we'll, I'll have a couple more things and we'll be done.